Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, in memory of... From Balmain Plumber here. to a life given to Rugby League, Danny and Stephen, I know you knew him very well. Yeah, I certainly did. I was lucky to call John a, a friend and a mentor. He was one of the first people I met when I went to Sydney. Condolence to the family. Uh, Johnny was a great man. He'd be sorely missed. He was a Mr. Fix-It. If you had needed something or a job or you needed someone to talk to, Johnny was the man. Rest in peace, friend. Yeah, I, I got to know him during the origin period and always sorted him out and going to have a, a nice chat to champion man. Underway at Bankwest, Penrith receiving the kickoff from Canterbury. And James Fisher-Harris, who's having such a strong season with the Panthers. His best by a significant margin in his fourth year of NRL has the first carry. Penrith at 9-9 nine and nine this season. They sit in eighth. They'll go as high as seventh with victory. Equal sixth, if you want to put it that way, but seventh on differential. They are 9-9, nine and nine, seeking positive territory, having staged... A really bright comeback from that poor start where they won just two of their first ten. Here's a determined run. Over halfway, Liam Martin carrying the dogs. Jack Cogger and Aidan Tolman as well. And now Isaiah Yo. So it was the Liam Martin run that really put them on the front foot in this opening set, which they will complete via the boot of Nathan Cleary, high above Bankwest, the test early for the former fullback, now winger in Nick Meaney. He's catch a good one. A great yardage set there from the Panthers. Got to the fringes very easily. Got through some nice spaces there as well. Nice tactics. The play of the ball is poor, but the penalty comes. Penrith all over. Their former teammate, Dallin Wateni Zalesniak, who is fired up for this one. He and Corey Harawira Naira former Panthers. In fact, you can throw in Chris Smith off the dog's bench as well. He made his debut for Penrith, so a little bit of feeling in this one. Yeah, a little bit extra on your ex-teammate, I'm sure. And it was, This time it was Mitch Kenny who put the hand on the ball. Only the second tackle. They get the penalty, the, the Bulldogs. Let's see how they go in this set here. Kerrod Holland with a carry. He had a tough time last week against the likes of Joseph Manu. And now Dylan Napa. Eight metres into Penrith territory. And up the middle they go again through Adam Elliott. Michael Leisha, the dummy half. Lewis and on to Tolman, who suffocated in that tackle. Frank Witterstein, the first man there for Penrith. Lewis is running it himself. And he takes tackle five. So the first set from Canterbury will finish with a bomb as well. Cogger kicked as or after he kicked the ball. Mansour takes it. No whistle. The tackle from Penrith deemed OK. Well, it was a good charge again. We saw the, the run there from, from Leon Martin early in the game. But that time he chased down the kicker too. Just the little areas. Much improved player, this young fellow. He's, he's a tough rooster too. Started well. As Penrith work their way beyond their 20. Good evening to you, sideline, Hannah Hollis. Good evening, Maddie. It's cooling off tonight in Western Sydney, but dry conditions, not a cloud in the sky today. But as we are coming to learn with the surface at Bank West, the dew settles in and becomes increasingly slippery. Dallin Wateni Zalesniak in the pre-game, we were having a chat, and he certainly was taking a very close eye at this track just to, just to determine how much dew there was. It is the Bulldogs' very first game at the stadium. And to celebrate this, they have given away 2,500 commemorative flags to all of the fans through the gates tonight, marking their moment. First game at Bankwest. Maybe Penrith will be blaming some early due for a mistake which has gifted Canterbury. Great position here. 20 out now. Harawira Naira with the offload. Back to Cogger. Out in front of Holland who drags it backwards. It looked as if it was going to be knocked on. No Penrith player touched it to force that ruling. And as a result, Canterbury through Napa, uh, 15 out, just to the left of the uprights. Early minutes at Bank West. Lewis, a oh, good tackle on Elliott. A wonderful shot from Liam Martin. What a start he's had, ball in hand and defensively. Cogger, the cutout ball. Now Hopawadi for the corner. Remus Smith goes over again. This finishing winger. Double-figure tries give him 11 for 2019 now. Oh, that's a comfortable shape that they throw on that right edge of the Bulldogs. They did it last week, and the same result came. 
a try to that man who bagged a double last week, Remus Smith, against the Roosters. But nice play. Here's this error. Penalty error in their first two, two sets with the Penrith Panthers, which has been all season at times. But that nice ball there just gets the interest of Naden. And that man, once you give him half an opportunity, he'll always get it down Smith. Yeah, Jack Cogger it was through the out ball there. The quick hands there, catch and pass from Will Hoffawati. Remus Smith, can't he finish this kid? He's a good player. Dives into the corner. As you said, Danny, penalty mistake there from the Panthers to start the game. And they look on today. First, score the first try, the Bulldogs. Look at his strike rate recently. The only men, gentlemen, to start every game for Canterbury this season, their right edge. Josh Jackson, Will Hopawati, Remus Smith. That consistency is the reason the bulk of their tries have come down the right-hand side. They look very comfortable down there, Matty. Why wouldn't you with that, that man on the wing? A hell of a player. Signed for a few years. That's the future of this club. I think he goes good too. Lockwood and Lewis being put in a position. Leave him there. So he's got that calmness about him. Confidence as well. Confidence and calmness. Last weekend against the Roosters, this man, Nick Meaney, knocked two conversions over from as many attempts, both from the sideline. One fell through with the assistance of an upright. So here's an early test from a similar position. Out on that eastern sideline to make or take full advantage of the first try scored through Remus Smith. Meany looks good off the tee, but it's waved away 4-0 Canterbury. You yeah, always think a halfback represents their team, and that's one thing about Jack Cogger and the, the Bulldogs this year. He's a wholehearted player, will never let you down. That's a nice structured play for Jack Cogger, and that suits him. It really does. And it's a cut and paste mo moment. He'll keep doing that again because that's a you know, interest from Naden there on that left edge for the Panthers. He showed his experience too. Will Hopawati under pressure. Yeah. You could feel the footsteps coming to him, just the catch and the pass. Beautifully delivered by the inside man in Cogger. He was really strong last weekend, the 21-year-old. From the Tookley Hawks, Jack Cogger. Remus Smith up to 11 tries for the season. Given the competition leaders are on 14, he's not that far behind, despite the fact his team is second last. Tall, fast, athletic on that right wing for Canterbury. Remus Smith. The other side of the field, Haruira Naira. Sounded to me, Danny Baderas and Stephen Roach, as if you were leaning towards an upset in this game. You like the dogs' resolve in recent weeks. Well, this is their new home base, so I really want to. I think they want to set a, a scene here and an example, and you can see the intensity already. I love the start of Dylan Napa. That's the barometer. He needs to really bring it for the rest of the, the time he's out there. Here he is again, this time tipping it on for Haruira Naira, who runs such a magnificent line. Last play as Lewis sends it high. Edwards times his jump, gathers safely. The confidence restored. He's been really good in that custodian role. And now the diminutive winger, Brian Toto. Might not be real tall, but gee, he can fly high. Some of the finishes for tries this season. Absolutely spectacular. Far Tackle just short of the 30. And Fisher Harris. And we saw for the Panthers, Brent Naden just explode onto, onto the scene. He was great for his first month. And last week I was watching him a little bit, maybe just a little bit of fatigue setting in in your first season. So I'm interested to see how he goes tonight here. Cleary kicking just shy of halfway. A torpedo of sorts down for Wateni Zalesmiak, who catches and returns with enthusiasm. It was an awkward catch, and in the end, he was left all over the ground. Luckily, he'd done enough to gather the ball. Dallin. All the way, all the way. Playing his sixth game as a dog after leaving the Panthers mid-season. Six seasons. More than 100 games of the Panther. The Canterbury number one tonight. Alicia from dummy half across the face of Tolman for Elliott, who's picked off by Kenny, but gets the offload away for Lewis. Now Jackson on for Hopawati. A consistent right edge in action again. 
five tackles down. Cogger to his kicker. And Lewis again picks out To'o, who signals it's my ball and gets it safely, but the chase will make sure he's trapped four metres out. Yeah, there's one thing about the Bulldogs this year is their percentage with their completions. And most in the competition, they get through their sets, they don't make many errors. It's what they do with the ball. And you see tonight, they're asking a few more questions of the Penrith Panthers, which is good to see. Mansour off his wing, looking for work and getting a penalty. Offside is the call against Canterbury. Josh Mansour, just the one try so far this season. Expect to him look, see him go looking for work. You're just trying to find that little bit of extra energy to the Bulldogs. When they've got the Panthers pinned on their own line, get off that line really quickly. That time they jump the gun a little bit too quick, give away the penalty. They're just over the halfway line now, the Panthers. Kenny sends it on to Cleary, long ball, Maloney. And Winterstein is tackled 10 in from this western sideline. Toto again, bit of footwork from Brian, and he comes out the other side, beats another in Dallin Wateni Zalesniak. What a run, Brian Toto. They get him five metres out and concede the penalty. Well, you see Loch Lachlan Lewis just ran straight back to his spot. He knew exactly what he was doing there, just signing that down. But the footwork from Toto, the best support player in the game, because it's an underrated part of his game, is Nathan Cleary. Watch him pushing through. He just missed him, Toto. He was just screaming down the middle of the field. What about the footwork? Really oh. late, too, at the line. I think people underestimate how strong this kid is. They take the tap, the Panthers. They elect against the gift, too. And they want four or six right here. Kenny Cleary. Harawir and Ira made contact. Kenny again on for Tamo. Uncle Jimmy's most minutes since 2012. James Tamo. Yo sees an opening and straightens. Force back a couple of metres out. Kenny again called flat. And the defence all over. Liam Martin. Now Maloney deep for Cleary to go to the line and grubber. Nick Meany gathers safely, spots a hole, steps past one. It was a waving arm from Jimmy Maloney that luckily for Penrith didn't make contact. Now that's the Panthers' problem. We saw it last week against the Canberra Raiders. That close to the line, you can't come away with any sort of points there. Great defence there, scramble. They really meant that at that time, the Bulldogs getting off their line. They put the pressure on the ball runners. They have had their defensive struggles, conceding the most metres, most offloads, third most tries and points. Well, that was strong. You want to be careful throwing his arm out like that, James Maloney. <laughs> if he collects someone, he'll be gone. It was wild, wasn't it? And luckily, he missed the mark. Lewis, again opting to give it plenty of air, but Edwards gets across and heads towards the middle of the field where he's rounded up, now driven backwards, rolling it off the hand for Mansour. Well played, as it turns out. Another offload back for Edwards. What a kick return this turns out to be. Yeah, they really hurt, as you can see. Oh, and then a penalty. And that's a big couple of seconds there for the Bulldogs and the Panthers. Gets him out of trouble there, Block. Nice and easy. I reckon the message will be going out from Dean Pay to the Bulldogs. Kill the ball. Don't allow the, the soft offloads. Let's have a listen here. Ben Cummins. Listen, you're here to listen. I appreciate you want to defend. I've got to officiate. So you don't go me and you don't go my assist. All right? Penalties, penalties for the set. No, the language. Well, that's a couple of piggybacks, isn't it? They've just let them out of their own area, the Bulldogs, which is disappointing. Just a couple of discipline areas. They're very enthusiastic here this evening. Normally it's Penrith conceding the most penalties, but a bit of dissent. It was what Ben Cummins indicated straight away. Corey Harawira Naira offering some refereeing advice, and Josh Jackson right on the spot to say, well, you better listen to Jimmy Maloney as well. Nice bit of by play as Maloney is called underneath by Naden. Naden scoring doubles against the Warriors and St George Illawarra. 
One of those tries against the New Zealanders, or inspiring. Edwards across field, now Toto again, back against the grain. And again, he proves hard to get a handle on. Four metres out, the Panthers. A long ball for Yo, now Cleary. Martin gets it away for Maloney, beautifully picked up by Naden. And he becomes Penrith's leading try scorer this season. Number seven for Brent, passing Brian Toto and Viliami Kikau. He saw in the lead up to that try a lot of change of angles, which is really good here at Bank West. But what they do, they get to a point and they have this nice set, set structured play. And that man Martin again, hasn't he been a find? And Maloney will be backing up all day and pass on to Naden, who does shows really good hands to get that. Yeah, it's a beautiful pass there from Liam Martin. And we, we already mentioned what a great start to the game that he's had. They've got to finish off their tackles, but the Bulldogs, they couldn't do it down the other end. They give away a couple of penalties. They were threatening, weren't they, the Panthers? They'd already made a couple of long-range breaks. The catch and pass on the outside from Maloney was skillful. And Naden gets across the stripe unopposed. The Any, Panthers hit back. Anytime you get a back rower, which Martin is just one-on-one -on -one with the half, which is for Jack Cogger, it's, it's very difficult. He needs to stop that ball, and he's good enough, Martin, to hit and spin and offload. And there's Naden, seven tries in seven games last. Outstanding start to his career at the Panthers. 23-year-old who recently had his contract extended out until the end of 2021, and with good reason. The Wellington Cowboys in Group 11 territory know how to attack. That's where Naden is from, and he's carried that sort of will to Penrith. Nathan Cleary, now that eastern sideline lifts the flags and kicks Penrith in front. I've got to say, from a selfish point of view, I was disappointed when I heard that James Maloney was bound for Le Catalan, fresh out of that Origin Series win, and catch and pass like that just underlines why. And you see with Jimmy, he, he'd take it real personal, their, their attack, especially in that part of the field. He'd really take it on himself to make sure it's right. There's the live ladder there. Uh, wouldn't think Penrith yeah. in seventh position. It's been an amazing turn of events for them. And that man's been a bit of a driver for the turnaround as well. Just such a competitor. He's in everything, isn't he? He's Maloney, too good to go Always yet. in the game. Too good to go yet. You're right. But he is as he catches the kickoff and goes to Fisher Harris. Speaking about good, what about his numbers this season? Averaging 77 minutes, 100 run metres, and 39 tackles per outing. The New Zealand international, James Fisher Harris. Mansour playing at middle of the ground. Tamo. He also boasts his best numbers in three years plus. Well, you've got to go in aggressive against this Panther side. If they get their tails up, got a lot of blokes who can promote the football, which has happened early in this game. Bulldogs need to defend a little bit better in the middle. Farai. Corey Harawira Naira, said of Penrith, his former club will be avoiding the left shoulder of Farai and the tackles of Fish in reference to Fisher Harris. Good advice indeed as the kick got big on Wateni Zalesniak, but he gathers it. Now he hits a hole and offloads to Remus Smith. The chase is on. Smith run down from behind magnificently by Liam Martin. Back rower on speed winger and Penrose forward does the job. What a chase. Elliot now. Great energy by Canterbury to start this game. They scored the first try, they now trail by two. The coach Dean Pay will be impressed with what he sees so far as Napa runs straight into the opposition front row. Martin making another tackle as well. Lewis, it bounces off Penrith back to Tolman. Was it played at? No new set signal, so it's tackle count continuing, and now Naden grabs the ball. A whistle from Belinda Sharp. The penalty goes to Canterbury. Offside, ruled against the visitors. Yeah, a couple of big plays there from Dallin Martini. Lesniak, outstanding from the kick return. The way he brought that back, does everything at speed. And then that ball out in the left, hit the head. Now you're right, Danny. He's the bloke that just gives them that little bit of spark, the Bulldogs, that they needed. 
He's looked very dangerous over on that right-hand side. Here's the take to start it. And how like, did he take that? Looks like he was going to swallow it. Look at that. The way he just brings it back. And one nice hand, ball. beautiful ball out there to Hopawade. And they spun it out to the left, and it hit the head of Yo, I think it was. And here he is again getting involved. Come off Mansell's hands into Naden. But the play the ball speed after that break from Zelezniak, play the ball speed was just too slow. That's the difference at the moment. Penrith are playing it a lot quicker. Well, I think the ability of the Panthers to be able to stand in the tackles. I keep mentioning the Bulldogs' defence. You've got to put those big boppers on the ground. They haven't been able to do it. That would be the message to be going out. Stop the ball and put them on the ground. Give themselves a chance, Danny. There's enough will and energy to start this game, isn't it, from the, the Bulldogs? Just those finer details. So the clock stopped while Naden received strapping to that left knee. Let's hope for his sake and that of the Panthers. It's nothing too significant. A lot, of booze, a lot of booze going on out there. You can't help getting injured. Some of the Canterbury fans disappointed that play was stopped. Wanting to land the two and get on with it. And these teams haven't met for more than a year. It was round eight last season. Their most recent clash. Penrith won that one 22-14. It's an interesting, interesting one, this, behind on the scoreboard, 6-4 to take the kick at goal. But anyway, the Bulldogs figure they need all the points they can get, and they'll take it on offer. Especially considering it's a tricky conversion, and now it's been wasted as Meany drives it to the right of the upright. So he was two from two last week. He misses his first two tonight, Hannah. Matty, we started Super Saturday on the northern beaches and right after this game we're heading to Cronulla to Points Bet Stadium where the Sharks prepare to host the South Sydney Rabbitohs at 7.30pm and their fearless captain Sam Burgess is back. Take watch as he is out in full force and for the Sharks they are looking to cement a spot in the top eight. Currently running 11th but if they can manage to get a scalp over the South Sydney Rabbitohs they can catapult themselves to eighth position. For Fata v Burgess. Might that be a battle? I'm hitting down there. Yeah, Andrew, good. Andrew back from suspension. Sam from a shoulder clean up that went wrong afterwards. And he'll make it personal. He's been out for a while. Leisha running. Only one run last week for six metres. He runs here, drops the ball, and he's called for a knock on. Oh, that's a shame for Leisha. It's one of part of his game. He's well known for as a kid. That's it enough, but got through there nice and easy. Tried to get the ball out so he could offload it. He needs to play the ball. And off he goes from there. He's just got the hand of Tamo. But, but the other thing, I know that he got his arms free to look back on the inside there, but there's no one there. Loose carry, fair call. Off contract this season. Signed until the end of 2019. Michael Leisha was out of the team for seven games mid-season. Still looking for his first try of 2019 at Canterbury number nine. Aiden Tolman receiving some treatment. We should touch on his milestone. He's had a few of them already this season. This game 200 as a Canterbury Bulldog after starting his career at Melbourne. Three years with the Storm. Now he's ninth. And he's only the 12th man into that 200 club for Canterbury. I'm pretty sure one of the Bulldogs greats and Premiership winning captain Andrew Ryan presenting his jersey here this evening with his young young kid. Bobcat part of that group who have played 200 for Canterbury. It, it is a fine list. Hazamil Masri leading them all. Steve Mortimer, Terry Lamb, Steve Folks, Chris Anderson, Andrew Ryan, as you mentioned. Luke Patton, Steve Price, Josh Morris, Eddie Burns, Corey Hughes. Now also Aidan Tolman. So I, don't, I don't think I put that much tape on the Nick. Did you see? Little Nick. Come on, Dan. You're not Come happy on. with that block. Well, they spent 860 bucks on his head wrapping. It's a power band. Leave it with him. What do you got for us, Hannah? Well, Matty, after the grand final, we're all thinking what we can do. Fear not, I have the answer. The Downer Rugby League World Cup of Nines will take place here at Bankwest. Indeed it will, Hannah. 18th and 19th of October. Won't there be some electrifying rugby league played at this ground mid-October? 
6-4, the Panthers lead. Edwards called inside and got the ball from Jimmy Maloney. Meters here, good go forward from Yo. Tackled 18 into Canterbury Territory. As Kenny jumps into dummy half. Just goes it alone. 20 minutes gone in this one. A try apiece as Cleary finds his harsh partner. Maloney puts it in the air, bringing Smith in field. He jumps and catches well. He has a height advantage and shows it there. The play the ball was horrible and the penalty goes to Canterbury. And someone's finally listened to me. You've got to roll out of the play the ball. You can't lay in there. One of my pet hates, you make the tackle, you can't have the hooker stepping over the top of you. There's the take there from Remus Smith. Just have a look. Make an attempt to get out of the play the ball. That's what the penalty's for. Look, just stay in there, son. That's not good enough for the Panthers. That's just a little dog breakfast in there. You'd be a lot more cleaner in around that area. Hoppawati starts the set. Now it's a run towards the middle of the fields. Josh Jackson it was. The now taped milestone man, Aiden Tolman, crossing halfway. They beat Cronulla and Newcastle before losing their last two against Brisbane. And last weekend, the Roosters 20 to 12, Canterbury. Five and 13 coming into this game, five wins. Tolman, Lewis, quick hands from Elliott. And Haru Iranaira goes back the other way. Failed by Isaiah Yo. That's tackle five. Oh, Cogger spots Dylan Edwards and kicks it high above him. No pressure on the fullback. He catches well. And now a penalty to the attacking team. Well, James Tarmo was shouldered one of the chases through. I think it was Meany trying to chase the football through. Escort, mate. Escort. There it is. That doesn't count. James, you've escorted. It's a penalty against your team. Yeah, it's been a one of the top is this week's I mean, players one. beat to so referees. You see, obviously, Cameron Smith talking about that in the Matty Johns podcast, the way he speaks to him. <laughs> when you're emotional and you're a big front row like that, they've been pretty chatty. Be under instruction, too. Well, there's in the arc, it is, it gets knocked over. On his way on the chase, that's a fair enough penalty. I don't think they'll be taking too much this evening, the referees. Not off Penrith, they won't be. Not after the events of the last week. James Tarmo, the captain. Strike rate of nearly 80% for Kerrod Holland. And this time there's no miss. Flags up, we're locked together at six. I don't think it does you any favours, the way that you approach a referee in an aggressive way. I know from experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same. What are my regrets? <laughs> Never listen to me, Bob. No, butter wouldn't melt in your mouth, the nearest. <laughs> oh, mate. Come on. It was one of my regrets chasing referees around. They're not going to change their decision. It's definitely how you approach them. A couple of deep breaths would help. But it's hard when you're stuck in the moment. moment. Yeah. Yeah. James Tamo, the 30-year-old, in his 11th NRL season. He and Fisher Harris. Starting every game for Penrith. Gee, he's been better since he's been made the captain too. Big Jimmy. The responsibility of being the captain of the Panthers, he's played well. His battle with the likes of Napa will be telling this evening. Great acceleration again from Wakteni Zalesniak. Frank Winterstein taking a breather. Campbell Gillard sent on for Penrith. Just got to stick out at the doggies' halves. You can't float in and out of the game. They set up the first try for the dogs. Got to demand the ball then. A little bit more support, especially for their middlemen. The halves can just get on the end of that fringe of that ruck. Don't set up. Lewis parked on his short side, kicks it high down for Edwards, supported by Mansour, but Dylan will go it alone and run into a strong tackle from Tolman and Elliott. We've mentioned what's at stake for the Panthers. Win a 
and they stay in the top eight, lose, they risk waking up on Monday outside the top half of the competition. Well, I reckon there's a fair incentive too for the Bulldogs. Stay away from that wooden spoon. They're one win clear of the Gold Coast. They're one win behind St George Illawarra. They've got an ordinary for and against the Bulldogs. They'll come down to wins for them. Maloney just holding it out in front, finding Martin. He goes on to Naden, who flings it towards Mansoor. It arrives on oh, the first man. bounce. Terrible pass, wonderfully picked up by Maloney, and they'll go again through Edwards. There have been some wonderful hands shown tonight. Cleary. Just seem a little bit brittle on their right edge defensively, the Bulldogs. There we go. Well, that's some sort of halfback play there, or halves play, I guess you could say, from James Maloney. Very adapted to playing the seven role, but beautiful ball playing. Going straight to the line, what putting Martin in. Are you taking us up? Right into a beautiful hole. And they're picking out Jake Cogger every time. I know he's not a big man, he's courageous, but they'll try and get one on ones with him. Martin's got the football away a couple of times, one on one tackles, one for a try. Tap and go again from the Panthers, Fisher Harris. Look at the completions. Both teams 10 of 11. Poor pass again. A pickup. Smooth from Martin. How did the ball come through there illegally, says Ben Cummins. Back to back penalties to the Panthers. A leg pull. Is it Josh Jackson? So Canterbury committing a couple in quick succession. There's Campbell Gillard sets them up. It shows you the mindset of both sides, doesn't it? The Bulldogs taking the penalty goals down the other end. Panthers trying to score. Cleary called by Yo, who goes back the other way. Straightening into Tolman and Leisha. They open up both sides of the field. Head to the left through Campbell Gillard. Called by Elliot, Jackson and Cogger. Maloney. Now Cleary. Isaiah Yo well handled by Harawira Naira and Napa. Kenny for Maloney, they're chasing a grubber here and getting there first, the Panthers. Naden with a first half double, but we'll have to check before we sign off. Well, we saw this Marky. last week. This way. He's got I have total five. five. Down the other end of the field. No try. No try. Last week, down the other end of the field, all he had to do was press the ball down, but he tried to pick it up and shove it over the dead ball line. That was when he's defending Penrith the kick. Penrith's kick chases are onside. But he, all he had to do was just press it down. Oh, he tried Oscar. to pick it up. Why? Put it down and with pressure. Brent Naden oh. loses the ball in the end goal. We have a decision. They have dodged one there, the Bulldogs. That was an all but certain try. There to Naden. Now I wonder what that'll take out of the Panthers. They've made breaks all over. It's no try. We already know. Made breaks all over the place, especially on the right-hand defence of the Bulldogs. But they haven't been to be able to mount it into points. Lost the football over the line that time. The question has to be asked for a man who has scored so freely over the last seven weeks. How does he not score there? Naden, maybe learning a lesson. In a difficult way right there. Just push it down, don't pick it up. Danny Fualalo thunders onto the ball. And now it's lost by Smith, picked up by Mitch Kenny and Penrith go on the attack again. We've got to take advantage of all these mistakes from the Bulldogs, turning the footy over. Got to get it across the stripe here, the Panthers. Just the second incompletion from the home team, and Toto plays it middle of the ground. It was Fare, in fact, as Maloney goes flat, and again, it's a strong run from Liam Martin. An eye catching first 40. Fisher Harris twisting and turning his way within 12 metres. Still three tackles left. Maloney to Edwards, who stops in the run. Stays on his feet. Maloney 
And Tamo. The, the dog's defense stands tough for the time being. Gotta get him on the That's ground. The five, five tackles. It's Cleary delicately towards the in goal, and Holland had to play. That was the kick they wanted, and that was the kick they received. Well, you got Maloney on the left just driving you nuts with those short little kicks, and then he's very adept at it too. And Nathan Cleary. Nice and easy, just feeding it through. They're best in the league. First in the league at line dropouts, forcing line dropouts against the opposition. That's what they do now, Block, isn't it? Got no dramas with getting repeat sets. How can they get across that try line? Five seconds, Nick. Their 47th forced dropout of the season, Blocker. 23 of them have come from James Maloney, but as we've seen from Nathan Cleary, he's very adept at it as well. Now Campbell Gillard. Had 56% of the ball, Penrith. A nice advantage in possession, but no advantage on the scoreboard yet. And as Yosa comes, 22 metres out. Cleary, called by Moses Leota, who accelerates towards a hole and takes a good tackle from Tolman. They head the same way. Cleary, an out ball here for Martin. You can see the goal line. Maloney to Cleary, the defence races up. Haruira Naira took a risk. Final play, out of dummy half, it's touched by Cogger. Gathered by Penrith, Martin shrugs off the tackle, and here comes Naden. They're on the ropes, the Bulldogs, they should score here, the Panthers. Very surprised they don't. Well, this is their trouble last week against the Raiders. Plenty of ball on the goal line, trying to attack. They couldn't get across the stripe. Marshall King stopped Maloney. Now it's with Cleary. Here's Farre. He gets the pass away. Dylan Edwards tries to create numbers. Still this goal line defence holds. Now Kenny kicking very early in the set. It's picked up by Hopawati, who runs it dead. And in back play, James Fisher-Harris had both arms out as if to say, what are you doing? I'm just checking to see what happened to this Regan Campbell-Gillard. Saying that obviously Tolman has grabbed him. It'll be a penalty to Penrith. I don't think a penalty three. try. No way, you wouldn't have I got have there. No try. Just keep concerned that Regan Campbell-Gillard's been run off the ball. In you go. Not only run off the ball, he was grabbed. <laughs> Penrith. <laughs> Penrith kick chases are on side. You couldn't have an opinion that he was going to get to the ball first and score, but clearly oh, it's a penalty against Aidan Tolman. Fair assessment, Danny? Yeah, absolutely. It's desperate times there for Tolman. He's obviously defending back multiple sets, back to back to back. He's just grabbed him. Whether or not it will be a penalty, whether or not they'll see this could be 10 in the bin. I don't know what's worse. Awarding a penalty try or sending someone to the bin for 10 minutes down. They're getting carved up around the middle at the moment, aren't they? Aidan Tolman runs... The dogs? Chris runs uh, Regan Campbell gillard off the ball. With the presence of uh, Canterbury player Will uh, Hopawade, we have a decision. Have you got a thing in a sin bin? Not a sin bin? Yeah. I think he'll go to the bin here. Yeah. No, come on. Ben come on. Cummins yeah, asking come the question. Him, yeah. OK, no try. Aiden. Aiden. No, on your 200th. Good evening. For the Bulldogs. For 10. It's not a penalty try because you've got Will Hopawati. OK, but a professional foul and a try scoring opportunity. Well, the captain might not be in too much trouble from his coach because when these teams last played at Parramatta, at the old Parramatta Stadium in 1995, Canterbury won and the starting prop that day, Dean Pay. Now, Canterbury coach got sin binge. No, he's an aggressive type, Dean Pay. I'm sure it wouldn't have been for an escort. <laughs> back in the day, you didn't do anything back then. But look, 12 men now. Obviously, they'll tap this. You'd like to think the Penrith Panthers and have a real good crack. Next eight and a half minutes going into half time. Shot a goal. 
And I've shown a well, willingness to attack. Yeah, you know what? That might be my first hello for the night. <laughs> down another player. They've made three, four clean breaks. And they're taking the shot at goal. Well, That'll do, mate. Are they out of answers here? That's just the questions they're throwing at the Bulldogs. So they have to just take the lead here. And to underline the petrol that's been absorbed or taken away from Canterbury, look at the possession for the last 10 minutes. When it comes to tackled in the opposition 20 for the game, Penrith 22 times compared to Canterbury's four. They've completed 15 from 16. And the amount of breaks that the Panthers have made, the dogs... I, I don't... You know, they're legless. You're, you're chewing, they can't stop anymore. You're chewing into your 10 minutes here. Over a minute to set that you should get. 94%. Lucky you're not out there, Blocky. You'd run Listen. in, rip the ball free of the captain, tap and go. Nathan Cleary kicks Penrith into the lead by two. Maybe a show of respect towards what Canterbury have offered defensively so far. Well, I'll tell you, if, if I was the Bulldogs, I'd be stoked with that. So Obviously, not, not stoked so with Aiden Tolman going to the bin, but I'm getting a rest. Finish off this first half. They've, they've defended probably four or five minutes down there on their line. Here's his live ladder. We'll keep looking at that, reassessing that over the next five weeks. Parramatta finished the round tomorrow against St. George Illawarra. Penrith applying the pressure this afternoon. How good is it the last few rounds when everyone's vying for a position? A mathematical chance. Yes, I love that one. Love that, one. <laughs> that means you're gone. <laughs> it does, Stephen. <laughs> You've learnt a lot in all your years involved in rugby league. You do not want mathematical chance mentioned in reference to that, your... That's top. almost as the same as you got the full support of the board. <laughs> yes. Fare towards the sideline. Toto -oh. heads back towards safety. Egan on into that dummy half position for Isaiah Yo. Six and a half left in the first 40. One try each. Moses Leota. Good run. Eventually succumbing to Danny Fuwalalo and Chris Smith. And Campbell Gillard. Stop 23 outs. Back towards Nathan Cleary, who will kick high across the ground, looking for To'o or Fare. Instead, it's Meany. You might think the Panthers will look to go through the middle third of the Bulldogs. Not try and go around them with that you see, extra advantage with the man. But there's plenty of space through the tired Bulldogs' middle. Martinez Alesniak with that carry. Backed up here by Kerrod Holland with an offload for Marshall King. Gets the penalty too long in the tackle. Liam Martin and Wade Egan. Watini Zalesnia sent back with a player in front. It was Kieran Holland out here on the left edge. Coming up next, we're off to Cronulla. So we've had a tour of Sydney this afternoon from Brookvale to Bankwest Stadium in Parramatta. Next, it's Cronulla, where the Sharkies host South Sydney. Sam Burgess back, Andrew Fafita back. Can Cronulla go back into the top eight? Do uh, Souths go back into the top two? Wade Graham back, Matt Moylan. Yeah, they're the two attacking players they need. What a super finish to this Saturday it shapes as. Cronulla South Sydney up next on Fox League. Haruira Naira. Nice. Another offload. He's nearly compulsive, isn't he? But you see the Harawira blokes who, who run off him. They're not running onto the ball. They're flat-footed. You've got to get up, take the stripe off his shorts. Get support close. And Haruira Naira first in the league, equal first with... Davida Pangai coming into this round, approaching 50 offloads. Lewis Smith, here he is this time holding the ball. Haruira Naira, forward pass, called against the Dogs. They finally find attacking position and give it away. Yeah, it's forwards passing to forwards, it's good to see, but they just dig a little bit harder into the line to Chris Smith there. 
Especially when you've got a hole runner like Harawira Nora. A real perfect dart. Yeah, can up the same the way he comes back at that Lachlan, inside shoulder. Still running. Lachlan, they could use him still a lot better block, couldn't they? Come on, need another one. Let's yeah, go. Give him some earlier ball. Let him do something. We know what great food he's got Let's with go. that ability to stand one. and tackle and offload. But okay. come on to the ball when you're, off, when you're offloading Lachlan. like that. You need know, someone sprinting yeah. onto the footy, not just standing flat-footed. Well, a man down, Canterbury intent on using as much of the scrum clock as possible. No, Aidan Tolman, Simbin for 10. A professional foul to deny Regan Campbell-Gillard a try or a chance to score. Fisher-Harris tackled 10 short of halfway. Here's Campbell-Gillard. His run take across field. Cleary. This is Edwards, and he can't find a way through. They've been forced to do a lot of tackling in this first half. Canterbury, Isaiah Yo holds the ball and eventually goes to Farre. Flicked out the back by Cleary, picked up by Leota. Last tackle, so he rolls it off the hand for Maloney, who kicks high. Hoping the chasers can get through, but Martini Zalesniak is on it. Gets away from one. Heads towards a hole and takes the tackle. Egan over the top. Leota involved down low. Well, the first couple of plays have been really good for the Bulldogs tonight, especially with Martini Zalesniak, the way he's running that ball back with interest. And then Meany's been getting into some good things. Kerrit Holland just gets him on the front, front foot to start their set. Well, it was good that start of the set, as you mentioned, but it was a quick play, the balls there from the dogs at the back end of the half. They win a penalty. They'll kick for touch and go straight on to the attack. I really hope they throw caution to the wind here. Eight six at the moment in favour of the Panthers. See if they can put something on before half time. The dogs. Nothing to lose. Let's go for it. It's back to what Denny Zalesniak playing his sixth game at Canterbury and singled out for special praise by Dean Pay. Maybe deliberately this week before fronting his former club. He said he's a leader, he's been a breath of fresh air, and Dallin responded by saying it's great to be at a family club. A little uppercut than his former men, maybe. A few little jabs. Lewis. Now Cogger. He holds the ball, takes the tackle. Just over two minutes left. They're midway through their set. Lewis, Harawira Naira standing this time. Diving the ground with the ball. Down the short side they come, Lewis passes now, Holland wrapped up only a metre out and a couple of metres in. From the northwestern corner, they'll send it back towards the east via the boot of Lewis into the air. It's touched there by Penrith through the hands backwards, say the referees, and Mansour cleans up. And yeah, there's two good high runners there to take that. And that was there, Rima Smith and Hopawati in the air. They're very, very good. They just couldn't get the ball there. It's nice escorting from the Penrith Panthers. Reddy's here, gets up Nate. He's a long way up, but aiming for Hopawati. Fisher Harris playing the entire first 40. Egan onto Maloney. A cutout ball for Martin who straightens towards a hole. One-on-one -on -one tackle comes from Cogger. Maloney again, to the line again, on to Fisher-Harris. They're not done yet, the Panthers. Off Holland, down for Faray. Best part of a minute to play, and they get a fresh set. Faray, a broken defensive line. He throws it to ground, and they throw it away. Harawira Naira cleans up. They push the pass, but with a penalty, or a scrum, is it? Back towards the other side of the ground. Yeah, the ball hit the ground. Harry and I was just <laughs> loitering, really. Tell you what, if the dogs can clean up their error rate in the second half, 4 1 the errors. Dogs can clean that up in the second half. They're in this game. There's only two points in it now. So there's the touch by Holland forward. Played advantage here. And as soon as the ball went to ground, it's back for a scrum with 27 seconds left. Time for Penrith to get through. Two, three, maybe four plays. Maloney. Martin hitting the hole, offloading towards Yo. In fact, it's Edwards up to play the ball, 15 outs. Cleary. 
Maloney. Yo now, catch and pass, ball to ground, dived on by Toto. Flag stays down. Did the ball stay? The ball stayed in the field of play. Obviously not touched by Toto, who got back into the field of play before he regained. Cleary, grubbers, chases. It's picked up at the back by by Denny Zalesnia as half-time sounds. Well, they've been forced to defend and defend in the first 40. And at half-time, they only trail by two. One try each at the break. It's Penrith eight over Canterbury six. Penrith nearly perfect in the first half. 58% of the ball. They complete 19 of their 20 sets. Yet they only lead by two coming back to the second half. Penrith eight over Canterbury six. We expected the Dogs to fight given the resolve they have shown in recent weeks. And they've done so again. Dallin Wateni Zalesniak playing his former club for the first time. And he's been big for them, Danny. Yeah, Wateni Zalesniak's been great. He's brought that ball back. Plenty of interest, catching the ball on the full, and we're trying to make a point here, as you'd expect. And the left side for the Penrith Panthers, Liam Martin, 91 metres, three offloads. Tough defender, one-on-one, -on -one, very good, much improved player. I think he was the Panthers' best in the first half. The only forward out there to run more than Liam Martin. Canterbury's Dylan Napa, nine runs, 100 metres even in the first 40. Canterbury to start the second half with 12 men on the field. Aiden Tolman due back a minute 13 into the second half. There he is. Head strapped in the first half, caused by a knock, and then Sinbin for an illegal hold on Regan Campbell Gillard in the contest for a ball in the in goal. Yeah, the dogs just got to clean up their error rate and also their one on one defence. You get a few more numbers in the tackle, put them on the ground, squeeze them on the way down. They're allowed to stand. Can't afford to do that. You ready, James? Penrith in front by two, chasing their 10th win of the season as the second half gets underway. And back at them hard. Danny Fualalo. Dean Pay in their ears at half time. We'll get a report from Hannah shortly. Let's see how Canterbury get through their first set. They also were tidy in the first 40, 13 of 16. Their completion rate in the first half. Marshall King called by Thualalo again, his second run in this first set after half time. You can see the running metres from Penrith impressive in comparison with Canterbury's, but helping that, the amount of ball they had, just repeating 58% of it. And Lewis goes along the ground towards the sideline, a grubber that forces Edwards into a corner. Now he heads back towards open field and he's trapped in his 10. The chase from Canterbury, a good one. Yeah, here comes Tolman back onto the field, looking to repay his teammates in his 200th. Been caught a couple of times, Dylan and Edwards running across field after kick reception. Easily, easily cleaned up a couple of times. Game 253 for Aidan Tolman, game 200 at Canterbury. The 12th man to do so. Well, you'd think that would have hurt them a little bit more, wouldn't it? But him being in the bin, it hasn't hurt them really at all. Campbell Gillard comes forward. Now Maloney. He gets the kick away. Across in cover. Wateni Zalesnia looks up and sees plenty of room. And look at this speed straight into Wade Egan, who steps backwards out of the collision. Wateni Zalesniak hits the deck and then gets up, arguing with Liam Martin. Martin stayed in the game and made the tackle. Here's Hopawati. Doesn't leave any in the tank, does he? <laughs> He's the Kiwi captain, Dallin Wateni Zalesniak. And now he's a Canterbury Bulldog, having left the Panthers. He's up for tonight quite clearly. Marshall King kicking out of dummy half. Edwards has it. Mansour in support. And he runs back towards his fullback before taking the tackle. Maloney to Yo. Edwards, he'll take tackle three. 
10 short of halfway. These teams struggling to score points so far this campaign, and it's continued tonight. One try each. The boot of Nathan Cleary driving Penrith in front by two. Far eight. It's the leg drive going. Chewing off a few more metres. This is the last. Chase is good. For Maloney to kick. Wateni Zelezniak is there. The catch is allowed to be taken by Naden. Back towards the middle of the field. Oh. It was catch and pass from Campbell Gillard. And then crunch from behind. Nathan Cleary shut down again. By Lewis. That was a great tackle. Oh, it's Little a try. Defense, boys. That's a try saver. That's what that is. That's inspirational from Lewis. Zelezniak just let Naden get a free catch there. Just bounces the ball back in field and very lucky to avoid. A try, but it's try saver from Lewis over the top. And Canterbury bring it out from their own 20 metre zone. Hannah, at half time, what was said? Well, Maddie, it is hard to believe when you watch how these teams are playing that seven teams separate them on the ladder. The stats are so similar. For Dean Pay, he's so happy with that goal line defence, particularly when his team went down to 10 men. I spoke to Aidan Tolman himself just before he ran back on after being Sinbin, and he just told me how proud he was of how the team has handled themselves in that period. Dean Pay wants them to lock the ball down in their tackles, watch the offload from the likes of Josh Mansour. As for the Panthers, play better, show more energy. They get the chance to do that here, and there was some energy shown by Edwards to complete the catch. It's as if he was in the outfield at Edgebaston. Just hope he was in Australia. <laughs> now, Toto. Six tries for Brian since making his NRL debut. This is Yo. Middle forward for Penrith. He's had concussion concerns, a shoulder concern, but he keeps battling on as his team has steadied the ship in 2019. Inside the top eight as we speak, and eyeing seventh with victory. That was just nowhere near on the same page there as James Maloney. They were just going across field. It'd be frustrating. Leota to Fisher Harris, who was under pressure, back to the interchange forward. Now Yo. Toto or Fare with a change of direction. And he stutter steps his way into Tolman and Marshall King. Last play as Cleary goes high. Hopawadi times his jump, gets it well. And Hopawadi held by the coattails but getting it away for Wateni Zelezniak. So fast off the mark. He forced some scramble right there. If you're a middle forward for the Bulldogs and you see Zelezniak running that ball back like that, it inspires you to get back on the side and get, get your hands on the ball and rip it forward yourself. Jackson holds the ball in his run. Remus Smith was sniffing around looking for a run. He still is, but they go the other way. For Alalo. Hasn't scored in 48 NRL games, Danny. Back to mid-2017. Last play as Cogger gets the kick away. End over end, high above Bank West. A regulation catch for Edwards. And he confronts this chasing line, brushing oh, away bad. from Hopawati. Yep. And obstruction picked by referee Badiris <laughs> and Roach, his assistant. Well, Naden just couldn't get out of the way, could he? So Edwards just coming to his side and put his hands up. Here it is here, just gets around to his left. Edwards, you see, just gets in the way there, Naden. Tell you what, there's moments in games when you start to get a little bit of energy. The start of the, the second half, well, that mistake there from the Panthers could be exactly what the Bulldogs need. You've got to try and find different parts of the game when you can lift. This is the time right now for the Bulldogs. Their wins this season coming against West Tigers, North Queensland, Gold Coast, Cronulla and Newcastle. Can they add Penrith to that list? In position here to take the lead. Right in front of the sticks. Marshall King through Lewis. This is Cogger. This is the zone where they have struggled. Landing a blow in the opposition 20. Jackson runs the good line. Straight and hard, well read. And he stopped just short. Now Tolman didn't pull the trigger on the pass. 
Opens up both sides of the field. Last play coming. Marshall King for Cogger. A long ball, two on oh. one. Catch and pass magnificently for Nick Meaney to go over in the corner. Put it down to Wateni Zelezniak. The catch and pass to release his winger. Magnificent. Yeah, there was a couple of deep breaths, wasn't there? Because we were all thinking, oh, they've ruined the set. The Bulldogs, the opportunity just in the middle of the field. But anyway, another great ball from Cogger and the hands from Zelezniak. See that man, Nick Meaney, outstanding. I was talking about you won't get that many opportunities here. They've started the, work, the, the second half well, haven't they, the Dogs? They score the try. Zelezniak again with the, with the catch and pass. Beautiful. Tuh-oh uh to come in. Meaney won't get an easier one than that. Maybe that's exactly what the Dogs need. The set was going nowhere, was it, until that, that pass from Cogger. Just a bit of vision, looking up. All those sort of standard shapes they had going on for the first three or four plays, and then a bit of halfback vision from Cogger. And let's praise Nick Meaney, who was playing fullback, his preferred position. Then Dallin Wateni, Zelezniak, arrived from Penrith six games ago and forced Nick onto a wing. There they are combining right there from a try. Nick's Newcastle player in his first year at Canterbury, forced to fill in, is the way to describe it, on a wing, time and being. There's another one as well. Kirit Holland got the duties off Nick Meaney. It's a good side for him to kick from. Fair strike of the ball. Studying the ball, concentrating, but missing to the left of the uprights. The difference, two in favour of the home team at Bankwest, Canterbury. Oh, you've got, you got to love a player who's coming up against his ex-club. Dallin Wanteni is the Lesniak. Look at this. Understanding. Do you just want to put yourself around the ball when you're coming up against your old teammates? Yeah, we said it a little bit earlier in the game, too. He just adds that little bit of class to the Bulldogs. Hopefully they can go out in the off-season and buy a few new players. Well, blocker this week, Dean Pay was asked about Jesse Raymond and Arpi Corusau. He said, I'd love to have both. I've already signed Joe Stimson. Braveheart wants to see as many stars out there as possible. Look at him revving yeah. up his troops. That's the sort of fan we want in the NRL. Get him on the fan, Bossy. Has he been on the fan? I think so. Get him on the field. <laughs> He run with a bit of passion, that boy. Where would you play him, Stephen? Back row. He wouldn't be a pretty halfback, would he? Yeah, There's another signing yeah. Dean Pay might be asked about this week. Thorlalo returned the kickoff, and now they push the pass. Holland was looking for Marshall King, who put it down. And in the set after they score to take the lead, they've gifted Penrith great position here. And they've been great at that all night. The Bulldogs coming out of trouble. Just push the pass out from holding. Extremely disappointed with that after points, as you said, Matty. Farah juggled the ball, but he held it just. Well, sometimes in those positions when you're taking the ball off your own line, you put the ego in the pocket. Just go down, play the ball quickly. Egan to Maloney. Now Cleary, Fisher, Harris. There are three dogs there to accommodate James. Five metres out. Egan goes short and flat for Leota. Back towards some second phase play. Maloney. Maloney dummying and stepping. Just a couple of metres short. The blowtorch on the dog's goal line now. A long ball out towards Toto, who put the big step on. Great tackle. And is cartwheeled into the turf by Lewis. A couple of try savers from Lachlan. Cleary kicks grubbers. It sits up beautifully for Wateni Zelezniak. And they survive again, Canterbury. He's game, Lewis, isn't he? He's always putting his body in the line. And there's that half-time address from Dean Pay, how excited and proud he was of their goal line defence. There's another example of it. Just his second game back in the NRL, Lachlan Lewis. Played his first game since round eight last weekend. And he's on the record of saying, I want to keep it. I want this dog's number seven to be mine. Great energy tonight defensively as Tolman takes them forward. Off his 135 metres, 40 tackles against the Roosters last week. More good fullback positioning, wasn't it, from Zelezniak? The kick from Lewis straight onto the chest of Dylan Edwards. And he get back, gets back within 15 of halfway. Josh Mansour. Hey. 
Tackled around the legs by Cogger. Fuolalo over the top. To'o. A long way from his wing. He should be too. Get him in there. It looks likely. Gets those tied forwards with his footwork. Campbell Gillard loses his legs. Tolman with a good tackle. Two plays left in this set. And as Maloney holds it out in front. Luai onto the field now. Layden hits a hole. The completion will come from Maloney. A grubber into the in goal. Well weighted, or is it too heavy from Jimmy? And Canterbury come back with an extra tackle up their sleeve. He's carried Holland with the ball. You'd think he'd tuck that, but no, he's handed off to Hopawade. Then back at him. Half a break there. It's good when they play that up tempo sort of footy. 20 metres up field straight away with the, the quick tap. Seven tackle set here. Remus Smith. Just that urgency to get on with the game here from the dogs. Got their nose in front now. Jerome Luai only just onto the field and sporting well a crazy set of undies. Looked like they were spray painted. Marshall King through Lewis onto Tolman. Lewis again to the line before he hits Cogger Jackson. And they're 23 metres out with two plays left. Smith tips it on for Lewis. Haruira Naira coming back the other way, bumping clear of one, held by a second in the form of Fisher Harris. Another change of direction from Jackson. The ball bounces towards Lewis. He offloads. It's done likewise by Holland, but they push one too many passes. It's forwards. And it breaks down. Yeah. Lots of right to left, Danny, but not a lot of go forward. Yeah, it was just one too many, Matty, wasn't it? It was brewing, but it was all over the shop. Just going to be playing a bit of footwork and give it down in some individual brilliance. There it was there, just a rush of blood. So it was going to be something that wasn't going to be structured there for the Bulldogs. That's good. That's how they're going to win this game here. Off the cuff a little bit. A bit of a balance. They can fall back into their structures, but they need to play up tempo. Yeah, you've got to make the Panthers panic. Make the Panthers play catch up. Be a little bit erratic. They've only come from behind to win twice this season. Penrith, or Canterbury, I should say. They were down at the break. They've found the lead. Can they stay there? I think about 14 of the 18 games they've been behind at half-time, Matty. Bulldogs. Yeah, very familiar territory for them. That's right. They've had five wins this year. It's been a big scalp. They've got enough energy and intent to, to get this result here tonight. And it would be a big blow for Penrith. Because they're in this mix to make the top eight. So many teams there around the fringe. It's going to be a frantic okay, final brilliant. month, isn't it? Off. Every win now Lewis. so important. Toto oh, rocked by the contact that came from Marshall King and Smith. Luai on to Fisher Harris. Canterbury no doubt very aware of the threat that is Jerome Luai, fresh man onto the field. Naden searching for halfway and stops just short. Clear, he wants it to the right and gets it. Now Luai for Yo. And they make sure there's no offload from Isaiah Holland wrapping up the ball along with Lewis. Steaming onto the ball. Good run from Campbell Gillard plus the leg drive to chew off a few more metres on tackle five. Just got to be clean at the back, don't they, the dogs? Cleary's kick is high, as was the leap that came from Watini Zalesniak, but he's knocked it forwards. No, they say play on Canterbury ball. Oh, they've ruled that come off Edwards' hand as he batted it back. Doing really well not to touch that, Watini Zalesniak. Belinda Sharp right on the spot to make her call. Here it is in the replay box, and a good call. Off Edwards and cleaned up by Canterbury. Ten 
season, isn't he? After every run he makes worth watching. His body on the line. He's, he's proving a point, isn't he? Every touch that he's got. Have a look at this one, coach. Cogger kicks. It was inside the 40, but was never a threat of finding the sideline. And Edwards again returns. He's lifted and slammed on his back by Marshall King. I suppose every time you make that lifting tackle, you take a risk. But there was nothing wrong with that one. Just a good, strong rugby league tackle. I reckon he tightens them up around the ruck a little bit. Marshall King, good defender. Dylan Edwards, nine, 20 runs, 172 metres so far. He was beyond 100 last week as well against Can um, Canberra. Fisher Harris proving a handful. Cleary to Yo. They like exploring on this right side, Penrith. Dean Farre given no latitude by Holland. Cleary sends it higher this time. Hopawati in place nice. and down with it. Not for the first time tonight. Oh, no. Will Hopawati, but he's thrown it straight to Fisher Harris. Hopawati's undone all the good work there. He's frustrated as well. It's a big play for his team, and then he's just come up with that one, just gave the ball back in great field position to the Panthers. What about Luai? Passed it to himself, then knocked it on to with, Campbell Gillard. With a poke in the eye. And Napa went after him there. He stayed down in back play. That's the way the ball has gone. Nathan Cleary for Yo. And Isaiah is just in front of the uprights. Kenny for Fisher Harris. And now Martin, still going, he deserves a try, Liam Martin, but he's been denied. Wateni Zalesnia. What a tackle. Our try saver blocker. Well, Martin thought he was in for all money after he twisted out, out of the last line of defence. They came again. The Bulldogs, desperation there. Have you got anything on that? Here's the pass here from Will Opawati. I wonder if he called for it there, Fisher Harris. Liam Martin's just got that ability just to spin, hasn't he, to the outside shoulder of Cogger, which is worrying him to no ends. Here it is here. Just that technique, a little bit low there from Cogger, and he gets in, and here comes Martini Zalesniak with another try saver, another big moment for his new Bulldogs team. Well, we've seen Lachlan Lewis come away with a couple too in this game. Desperation shown by the Bulldogs. They're hanging on to a two-point lead at the moment. So the captain back on as Jerome Luai heads up the tunnel for treatment on that poke in the eye. Luai off, Tamo on. We'll see how they shuffle the deck. That's your job, Coach Badiris. Now Luai's been playing the middle. He's trying to get that middle distribution. So just a straight swap. Yeah, straight swap. Tamo going in the middle of the field. Penalty to Canterbury. And very much a reliever for Will Hopawati. <laughs> That's a big relief exactly. as well. The great relief for the Bulldogs. Here's the injury a poke in the eye there. The that explained the pass and then the push on. He's accidental. Just Napa finished the tackle off too. As Dylan Napa swung his arm around to try and make contact and affect the tackle, the finger went straight in the eye. Hannah will check on Jerome Luai. Jackson for Napa. We have 100 run metres in the first 40, Dylan Napa. We have to build on his tally now. Just get your kick the Bulldogs need to do. Last couple of sets, they haven't been able to do it. And the pass from Jackson knocked down by Nate, and that's why Mansour has been called back. Knock on against the Panthers. So the Dogs will keep the ball and start this set about 30 metres out. Well, it was a timely hand as well. There's an opportunity there. Jackson just had to get the ball out to his centre in three quarters and Smith and Hopawati. It's an opportunity. Look at this, 30 metres out. And all the momentum at the moment. There's the top eight. But lurking just behind that top eight. The Cronulla Sharks, who are up next against South Sydney. 
And if the Sharks can win, they'll jump into the top eight tonight anyway. Quick hands again, Wateni Zalesniak. Holland did well to take the ball, and he takes a tough tackle from Brian To'o. Again, it was Wateni Zalesniak involved. Jackson just flicking it out for Popawati. Cogger, killed by Renoff Tuamanga. Playing his eighth NRL game, yet to score in the top grade. Cogger, 10 metres out for Napa. A little pirouette in his run. Didn't fool Campbell Gillard or Cleary. Here comes Elliott oh. at pace into Fisher Harris, who didn't budge. Two forwards collide. Five tackles used. Marshall King to his left for Cogger to Grubber. It was knocked on by Nathan Cleary, and Canterbury can reload. They came around here, Cogger did, with one intention in his mind, was to get that ball through that line, because they had plenty of chases on, on the same page as him. Just he's had good. to get it through, just had to execute that, but he did a really good job, Cleary. He's good with ball in hand, isn't he, Cogger? I know he's been picked out defensively, but he's taken a couple of right options, put on a couple of tries, then the grubber kick too. Cleary had to throw his hand out there. Yeah, Lewis was just streaming through. Part of the reason winning is so important for Penrith, they have the worst differential of any team there around the fringe of the eight. Got to defend here. Or is seeing Canterbury go ahead by more than a converted try through Cogger. Jack Cogger takes them on on tackle one and comes up in the in goal. Tackle one. Have a try. What are they looking at? Can you right there's the a spot. That's why we always talk about, you always love halves going direct and taking people on with their footwork. He definitely gets his ball down, or does he? Ooh. He's supposed to re-grip on the way down. Oh, no, this could be tragic for the Bulldogs. Could you give that blocker? Technically, if you lose the ball, you have to re-grip. Re -grip. Yeah. But does it Has ever it roll that? away any way from his hand? I know it rolls, but does it ever separate? Does he keep control? If you go well, through it frame by frame... On the other Jack angle... Cog Jack Cogger maintains possession of the yeah. ball and grounds Ooh, it in the end goal. Go. We have a decision. Once again, they've got all the angles there in the bunker. I'm sure we'll there's one that comes up. We might hear a bit more about this one. They'll give it, but Thanks by the much. sound of it... A beautiful play from Cogger. The way the ball sort of beats the man, and then all of a sudden he comes back off his right with the ball's in the air. He just beats the Panthers' defensive line with his right foot step. Well, let uh, me ask you this, gentlemen. Are you happy for that to be awarded a try? Like I said, we, we've got, from angles we're looking at, it's dubious, but I'm sure there's an angle coming from the post, I reckon, that would really confirm it. He's been in everything attacking-wise, hasn't he? Are you happy, Matty? Give him the try. I'm happy. I want to see tries given. But... If that's the standard, then we've got to make sure we maintain that week in, week out. And Holland drives two more through. A few Panthers fans might be arguing the point. Did he maintain possession in grounding this ball? He certainly controlled it well enough to find the in goal and have his hand on top of the ball as he planted it. But it's just that as he was going through the line, there's also looked to be dislodged a little bit, just couldn't re-grip it. Gee, I go back to the first half when the Bulldogs were down to 12 men and the Panthers took the shot at goal. Yeah. Going right back. That's it an important 10 minutes for the Panthers. You see the Bulldogs as well. But Cogger is having a say in this game. His third try of the season, the fourth of his NRL career. He's found a nice patch of form. The 21-year-old 5'8 at Canterbury. Into the back end of this game. The final 20 minutes. And Penrith spotting Canterbury an eight-point lead. An offload here with a second phase shut down quickly. And as Josh Mansour jumps on top of another Josh Jackson. Shot, oh, good shot from Liam Martin. Shot. Right under the ribcage of Remus Smith. 
In fact, it was what Denny Zalesniak who got up laughing. Oh! Squirming. <laughs> I don't know if he's laughing inside. What a shot from Martin. Napa flung to ground this time by Penrith. It was Campbell Gillard. Lewis goes high. Edwards waits, catches well. And gets those stepping feet going. He's got some sort of technique block, hasn't he, Martin? With them, both sides of the ball. Yeah, he has. Gets it done. He's very good, isn't he? He's been a fine for the Panthers, the young fella. Gets up under the ribs, good technique, as you said. Maloney for Martin, he's towards the sideline. Elliot the tackler. Maloney to Edwards, a cutout ball for Campbell Gillard. Here's Yo calling Fare underneath, but Yo takes the tackle. See so Meany and Holland. Someone's got to straighten up there. Too much of crossfield stuff from the Panthers. It's Fisher Harris taking tackle five. Maloney shapes to kick and does now. Out towards Remus Smith, who's airborne. The ball bouncing backwards there for Penrith. Picked up by Mansour. On for Campbell Gillard, who twists a couple of times and holds the pass. Cleary. His run stopped a couple of metres short. Kenny for Tamo. Big step from James. Up in the air. Time to get the play the ball done. Maloney, Edwards, he passes for Naden. This goal line defence up to the challenge, albeit with an illegal manoeuvre offside, says Ben Cummins. Well, who's he called off there? Remus Smith has been down worrying about a cramp or something with a lower leg injury. And here it is, Hopper White has gone down with one as well. Just trying to stretch out a little bit of time. They're using every trick. Will Hopper White has gone down with cramp. We had another bulldog holding the ball, refusing to give it to Jimmy Maloney. Well, I know they're ahead 16 points to eight, the Bulldogs. But their scramble defence on goal to save tries has been outstanding. It's desperation. Down the bottom of the ladder and still got the desire to win footy games. I love it. Well, while we have this stoppage, let's go down to Hannah. Blocky, we might be witnessing one of the biggest upsets of the season and who knows what's going to happen down at Points Bet Stadium for our next game this evening only on Fox League at 7.30pm. It's the Cronulla Sharks and the South Sydney Rabbitohs and we have the heart of Redfern returning. He spent five weeks with that shoulder infection but Sam Burgess is officially back. Can't wait. Quite the game. Burgess and Andrew Fafita head to head. But we've got a game here with the best part of 14 minutes remaining. Canterbury closing in on an upset, leading by eight. Kenny to Cleary. Isaiah Yo in cross field. Where's the straight runner? Will he need one? Yo going very close. Isaiah Yo, the defence just held off and held off. Now back through Maloney and Tamo. Harawira Naira there to make the tackle and make sure there's no offload. A couple of Kiwis head to head. Maloney from 10 outs picks out Edwards. Naden with a bit of room to step this time. Back to his fullback. And Edwards jumping around. No way through. He loses his legs. Courtesy Adam Elliott. Maloney, a long ball for Yo, out for Fare. Fare dummies should he pass for Brian Toto? We'll come back to that. Again, Corey Harawira Naira is everywhere in defence. Maloney chips out towards Hopawate up above them. He's got it. He won't pass the ball this time, Hopawate. That's a great take to great defence here for the Bulldogs. Gutsy stuff. Every time they're turning and repelling the Penrith Panthers attack, they're just growing in confidence. You can see them, they're just scrambling. I feel like they understand where everything the Panthers are going to throw at them. We'll put up a stat just showing this dominance. Penrith tackled in the opposition 20, 40 times. Well, maybe the Panthers are throwing too much at them. By that I mean, they keep throwing the ball side to side and still winning the right 
through the middle third of the field. You've got to try and pull them in a little bit. Just, get the extra man. Just isolating someone. You've seen it with Martin, haven't they? Don't you isolate one of those halves? Give me some joy around there. The kick picked out Toto perfectly. He just planted the feet and waited. Brian back within six or seven of halfway. There's an art to attacking in the opposition 20, Danny. There it absolutely is. You've got to be confident where you've got to get to with your points and you know, look out and call the numbers. Your hook has got to be ready. Halves have got to be all on the same page. And then your middle players. There's got to be someone in the, a link player in the middle to be able to pass the ball. We have seen teams struggle in the opposition 20 this season. Dominance in that regard for Penrith tonight, but they trail by eight. Cleary skipping across the field. Yo straightens. A big 12 minutes ahead for the Panthers. Maloney, can he steal one as he gets an offload from Fisher Harris? Will it be Jimmy wins again? Not if the ball hits the ground like that. And clambering all over Penrith to make sure of possession, Dylan Napa. Yeah, just in the process of making that tackle, Jack Cogger. From Jimmy Maloney was turned back on the inside and his hand came in contact with it. There it is here. Cogger comes across on the inside. A bit of pressure on Maloney. Well, they're going to start to get desperate now, aren't they, the Panthers? And it's Penrith possession here, Blocker. Ruled knock on by Canterbury, so Penrith at yeah. least keep the ball. Does funny things to your mind, the clock, when you look up and you're behind. You've got to play catch up here. Make sure you keep it on Fox League. Up next, Cronulla against South Sydney. Kenny from the back of the scrum for Cleary. Edwards, Yo is the straight runner again. He's got Hollands down low and Haruira Naira up top. Fisher Harris steaming onto the ball. But he runs straight into some willing defenders. Holland, the man most responsible for the tackle. Cleary out the back, Maloney holding the pass up. Liam Martin asking questions again. And he's dragged backwards. When do they break the dogs? Can Jimmy Tamo do it? Held by three of them. Elliot, Napa, Harawira, Naira. Kenny for Cleary. This is Fahre twisting and offloading Dylan. Edwards is grasped by Harawira, Naira. Well, look at his tackle count in a moment. Final play. They eventually head back open where Maloney stabs the kick, chases hard. It's rolling and another goal line dropout forced by a man who does it often, James Maloney. He's got a patting on the backs going for the Bulldogs. Pretty happy to defend another set, so they're confident what they can do, but Maloney, just a high percentage end of sets. How many times have he saved their sets this year at the back of a good kicking game? I love how cool and calm he is. 17 tries assist so far this season, Maloney. It's all up to him, but look how calm he is. Hang on to it, boys. Here we go. Can get of, back in here? There's a lot of block plays there, wasn't there? And that's one thing that really brought in tonight. There's a lot of block plays. Like at the back, he's getting the ball going sideways a lot. Yeah, a lot of cross field running, isn't there? Runs really straighten up, try and get one on ones. Sort of cramping themselves, aren't they, the Panthers? Yo again. 29 tackles for Hurrawee and Ira. Make it 30 level with Josh Jackson, most for the Bulldogs. Cleary to Maloney. Again, Maloney just waving the wand, hitting Martin. He loses the ball. It was a tackle by Jackson, his 31st, to save the try. He looks the man most likely, doesn't he? The young fella, the back rower, Liam Martin. No support. He goes straight through here. Tried the miracle ball, the tackle over the top, made the ball go loose, and the Bulldogs hang on. Aren't they gritty tonight? Got two tries in his 10 NRL games before this one blocker. The dominance over the last 10 minutes for Penrith, highlighted by those stats, top of screen again. But they haven't been able to score. Here's Napa throwing himself at the defence. 
Half-time score was 8-6 to Penrith. Only points in the second half to Canterbury. Edwards fields the kick and he's stopped 20 metres out. Well, they'll be enjoying this view. The Bulldogs down this end of the field. They haven't been down here for a while. But most of the match defending their own goal line. And there's the Panthers through far eight. Four blowouts to open round 20. This one, the tightest Jets, eight the difference. And Mansour with a tough run and offload for Fare. Maybe they'll have more luck attacking from distance, attacking from range. Leota. I don't know if they've got the legs here. The sad thing is it doesn't come down to luck, Matty. They're oh. now put down by Maloney. The veteran in his final NRL season, unhappy with that moment. And look at Wateni Zalesniak. He is not slowing down. He's not stopping at all. Tolman, his 200th as a Bulldog. Is it about to be another happy milestone? Elliott. This is their first game as the home team at Bank West. The first of many they'll play as the home team here over the next 12 months at least, probably the next three years. Lachlan Lewis for Napa. Penrith appealed for a forward pass, and now it's been called knock-on. I'll tell you what, that was Fisher-Harris there coming out of the line to put the pressure on. He's not real well, Lachlan Lewis. Now that was a late call, Matty. That was, that was forward. It was a forward pass, so... He's sort of coming down the back straight, the Bulldogs. I think they'll be able to close this out. Penrith aren't dead yet. Just see the pressure going. Every tackle, though, the pressure's just getting... Yeah. Previous save, you put your leg out, so it's on report. For a trip. Yeah, I've missed it. So Ben Cummins putting James Maloney okay, on report yeah. for a trip. Referee Cummins admitting that he it's missed it, so he's been tipped off. And there it is. After the error, just a lazy yes. attempt by James Maloney, for which he'll probably pay a financial penalty. It would have been different in your day, Blocker. Yeah, I think that was just a lazy. Lazy leg out, I don't think there was really any intent in it. Edwards almost away. This defensive effort from Canterbury, worth noting. Tamo crossing halfway. They're within six minutes of the finish line. And it's Leota only just holding the pass. Had to grab it at second time to make sure of it. Maloney looks infield and finds Tamo. There are supporters infield further, but James takes the tackle. See how he doesn't let things bother him, James Maloney. Keeps trying. As does Fisher Harris. But this defence is constant as well. And his fan out to the left. Cleary to Leota stepping in front of the uprights and offloading for Tamo. James Tamo gets the ball away. Cleary called by his man out wide. Liam Martin tips it on for Yo, and it's retrieved by Canterbury. Remus Smith cleaning up a messy finish from Penrith. Oh, they've been resilient, haven't they? The Bulldogs were speaking about all, speaking about all in the second half. It's been the first half as well to set it up. The mindset from the get-go has been full of intent, protecting their own goal line. Fuwalalo, happy to work the clock inside the final five. This is Elliot. Big run meters for Dylan Napa, 145 to go with 27 tackles. Tolman, 100 meters plus, and only 35 tackles, and here's Holland. Isn't it amazing? Everyone wants the ball now. Four and a half to go on the clock for the dogs. Lewis, catch and kick. Happy to drive it towards the sideline instead. It's off Penrith, picked up, and now Dylan Edwards counters, bumping away from a couple, but not Tolman. That's a great effort from the front rower there in his 200th game. Offload there, a good one for Kenny. He'll take a few more metres. 
Toto playing it. Cleary, Isaiah Yo, and Canterbury just tackling and tackling. The offloads 22 to 14 in favour of Penrith, make it 23 now. Fisher Harris on to Liam Martin. Still standing. What a stubborn customer he's been tonight. Liam Martin from the Tamora Dragons. His first year of NRL at the Panthers. A long ball to James, Mal James Tamo. The time starting to work against the blocker. He needed a pass there, James. Mansour, Cleary, back to his winger. Here he is in the middle of the ground. Maloney kicking. Well weighted. It will end up in the end goal. And they force a dropout. Nick Meany back there to push it dead. Well, they're going straight through and direct, aren't they? That's a nice play. There's tied forwards. And there's another repeat set. The right boot. James Maloney. The cramps are starting to come out for the Bulldogs. Plenty of fatigue in those legs. Probably just defend this set. Likely to get the win. Ball cramp as the clock ticks. Still five seconds left on the dropout clock. The kick comes safely in time and squirts down 50 metres plus. James Fisher Harris back at them. It's been a common sight. Adam Elliott is appealing for a drop ball. Belinda Sharp there it is. now rules in that favour. In fact, it's Cummins. And James says, I didn't drop it. But Adam Elliott begs to differ. Well, the tackle players knew that he dropped the ball. Fisher Harris. There we go there. Tolman and Elliott involved in the tackle. It's a good charge. Okay, so the look is on. I struggle with that rule these days. He said he knocked the ball on See into Adam Elliott there. That's what the boys are saying. Stand up and don't change your position. Elliott said he momentarily lost the ball in which time I touched it. Therefore, knock on. Letter of the law, I suppose yeah. it's right, Danny. Yeah, it is, but that's the game there. You see the Bulldogs. A minute 25 left. It's been painful trying to watch the. The Panthers break the shackles oh, in the second half. Big water torture, hasn't it? Oh. The frustration they must be feeling and the pressure. You could just see it building and building and building. Well, after winning seven straight, Penrith heading towards consecutive losses against Canberra and Canterbury. All along, we wondered what price are they going to pay for losing eight of their first ten. When they strung seven in a row together, it looked like they might get out of jail for a moment even challenge the top four teams but consecutive defeats now make the top eight the aim Elliott as Canterbury close in on their sixth win and Lewis drives it towards the eastern sideline inside the final minute the dogs taking a big step away from the wooden spoon saying Gold Coast you better keep that stand up don't change your positions Dean well, it's just typified their season. They've, they've stuck at it, and that's how they've played tonight, just sticking at just it, be sticking out the what they're good at. And they just knew if they could defend their, their line, because the, the pressure's on the Panthers. There, the pressure was to score points in, in that 20-metre zone. Yeah, sure, every time they you repelled go, them, Dream. they just grew. What that ladder doesn't show is Cronulla yeah. just behind Coming Penrith, through. and I'm able here. to join them on 20 points that's with fine. victory tonight against South in the game to follow, but... Because of their better differential, they'll leapfrog Penrith and knock the Panthers out of the eight. Watch a quick one, yeah, go. Ten, Josh, ten. Quick tap and run from Edwards, who gets the ball away to Naden. Naden shrugs clear of Elliott, but he's wrapped up still his own side of halfway. What a big performance it has been from Canterbury to Chris and Bankwest as their home venue. The third club to call it home behind the Eels, behind West Tigers. Be a winning start here for the dogs. Maloney infield for Fisher Harris as the seconds wind down and the flags that are blue and white wave around the stadium. The fans appreciating this performance from Canterbury. They have tackled their way to victory. Arms in the air. Applause for the crowd at Bank West.
It's been a tough season, but highlights like this are worth remembering. Canterbury, 16, beat Penrith, 8. They were beaten in so many statistical areas, the Dogs, but they won where it mattered most on the scoreboard, giving Penrith a big advantage with possession and other areas. But when it came to tackling, they were mighty, especially in their own 20, where Penworth were trapped 47 times to 16. McMeany, a try scorer. Aiden Tolman celebrating game 200 as a Bulldog with victory. And we'll catch up with, no doubt, a very happy Canterbury Bulldog. Just their sixth win of the season, shortly with Hannah. Dallin Martini Zelezniak, his first game against his former club, and it's a win for Dallin. He admitted there are many mates in the opposition lineup, but tonight was all about beating his former team. Penrith in eight, sitting ducks if the Sharks win in the game to follow. And Canterbury, as mentioned, joining St George Illawarra on 14 points now, two wins clear of the Gold Coast Titans.